What's going on everybody and welcome to the Big Rob Show. Today we're doing a super easy dessert and whether you call it a crisp, a crumble or even a cobbler, I can show you how to make it super easy and very versatile. Come on in and join us in the kitchen. Alrighty, so for today's recipe, we're gonna use some stone fruit. I picked up some peaches and plums at the market, but what's great about this recipe is you can use any fruit from apples and pears during the winter time or even frozen berries. Um, this recipe is super versatile. So let's get these halved and quartered up. We're gonna be super careful with the pit. Cutting them into wedges, we're able to pull them apart a little bit easier without squishing them. And really all we're doing is cutting around that pit. Peeling off the wedges and popping all the fruit into our bowl. And we just got to remove the pit. And we can go in and cut those up into more bite sized pieces, but I like a little bit uh, more of a chunky uh, texture. And um, I love the variety of different fruits because it gives you just different uh, eating experiences with every bite. Alrighty, now that we got all of our peaches and plums cut up, we're going to add a little bit of flavoring uh, just to enhance all those flavors. Um, first off, I'm going to take an orange and we're going to just grate the zest. You don't want to go too far into the zest and grab the white part that's under the colored um, rind because then it gets super bitter and just makes the dish taste really bad. So just that outer layer. We're just going to grab about half of the orange and we'll stir this all in. And to me, the zest is far more flavorful than the juice without adding any of the acidity of the fruit. And then what we'll do is we'll go in with a little bit of nutmeg, just a pinch. To me, Nutmeg and peaches go very well. So just a little pinch. And one of my favorite spices to use with sweets is garam masala, which is an Indian spice mix that has cinnamon, clove, and a couple of other um, different more savory spices, but just bring out the, the, the fruitiness of the fruit. It even has a little cardamom, which is super flavorful. So just a little bit of that. Just a little much more exciting than pumpkin spice in my opinion. And then we're gonna sweeten this up with a few spoonfuls of sugar. And that's just gonna melt down as our crumble heats up and creates this nice, um, you know, flavorful liquid that you can mix with ice cream at the end that's super flavorful. Uh, I like adding a little bit of honey um, in conjunction with that sugar, which is going to add some floral notes. And then what we're going to do is just get this all tossed up. And from here, we can add our topping. But what I really like to do is throw this under the boiler in the oven for about five to ten minutes to get those sugars caramelized and start uh, cooking down the fruit before adding our topping, so it just intensifies the flavor and it'll produce a much flavorful dessert than if we just add the topping here. Alrighty, so as we wait for the filling to uh, caramelize in our oven uh, and those you know sugars start to develop, we're gonna set up the filling. Like I said earlier, this recipe doesn't have um, any kind of exact measurements. Um, with the fruit, you saw that I added um, as much sugar as I thought I, uh, would create kind of that nice juice and coat those fruit. 
but here's the one part we need to get down. Um, the one little measurement to make everything work is for the topping, we're gonna do two parts of flour, and what's great is you can mix up flours. Today I'm using an all-purpose and an almond flour. So I'm gonna do half a cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of almond flour, and so that two parts flour, you need one part butter. And let me show you how we get that done. We're gonna get a half cup of all-purpose flour and half a cup of almond flour. And you can use all almond flour or all all-purpose flour. I know there are some of you with celiac disease that can't do the all-purpose flour. So here the all almond flour, going 100% almond flour would be a great idea. And then what we're gonna do to this flour is take some cold butter and cube it up. And we're gonna just dice this up into small cubes. Then we're gonna mix this up kind of in the same manner you would do if you were making biscuits. You basically wanna break down the cold butter with your fingers in the flour. Um, and before we start doing that, we're gonna add just a little bit of sugar to sweeten this up. We wanna have a little bit of sweetness in the topping. And I'm eyeballing it, because like I told you, the only thing we need to worry about is that two to one flour to butter ratio and everything else, I'm gonna wing it. Um, I'm gonna basically, what you wanna do is you wanna coat each cube of butter with the flour and then press with your fingers, okay? And what that does is that kind of disperses the butter in the flour, hydrates that flour so that when it bakes, it's nice and crispy, and you don't end up with super dry flour patches. We're gonna add a little salt to this mixture, because everything sweet needs salt. And then this mixture, once we have it all homogenous, what's great, a little bit of salt, so add that. Yeah, about a pinch of salt is perfect. And once we have this all homogenous, what's great about this mixture is that if you make a big batch, let's say you decide to do you know, four cups of flour to two cups of butter. In this case, you can take part of that topping, just pack it into a uh, freezer safe bag and save it for the next time you have a big batch of fruit. Um, you know, or you get a frozen bag of berries, you can come home real quick, make a nice little dessert after work, super simple. Just, you know, take that frozen pastry out of the freezer, top it onto those fruit, pop it in the oven, and you got a quick dessert in less than half an hour. So we're just gonna keep working this to mix it up. Now this simple little pastry, I'm gonna just amp it up a little bit more, add a little bit more texture. And what I love about this basic pastry here um, and this basic topping is that it's so customizable. You can add nuts, add oats, um, you know, add different crunchy toppings, maybe even some of that um, crispy, uh, you know, brand cereal or those corn flakes, um, which are gonna just add a whole nother textural component to the topping. So in this case, we're gonna add a nice little handful of oats. Okay, and those oats are just gonna add to that crunch factor. And then we're also going to add in some almonds. Let's see it all coming together. It's now holding together if you squeeze it really hard. And then what we'll do is once the fruit comes out, we'll crumble it on top. Let me get my hands clean and throw in some almonds, fold those in. All right, let's get these almonds incorporated. Nice little handful. And then we're just gonna fold this into the dough. And 
from here we got our dough already set. Okay. Got nice clumps, but still loose. And now, let's get the filling that is coming out of the oven right now. Fruit are looking good. You got a little bit of browning and caramelization of that sugar. We're gonna add one more ingredient to that. And that's just about, I'd say, a quarter of a teaspoon of good vanilla extract. Get that nice and mixed up. Vanilla extract is mainly alcohol, so I didn't want to throw that in the oven all the way at the beginning. Right, looking delicious. Fruit's starting to break down already, which is perfect. So we're gonna grab our topping and get our hands dirty again. And then, essentially what we're gonna do is just break this off into chunks and cover up all the fruit. want to cover as much as possible knowing that we might have some exposed fruit but that's all righty it's just going to add to more textural complexity get all those last little bits of almonds which will toast up nicely in the oven and I don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's already some of those juices coming up Perfect, those are just gonna soak into that crumble and then also add to the sauciness of the dessert, which is perfect to just drizzle all over some ice cream or some whipped cream or just, you know, slurp it up by itself. So let's get this in an oven. We're gonna go about 30 minutes and about 350 and uh, we'll see how it turns out when we pop it out. We decided to leave it in the oven an extra 10 minutes. That was about 40 minutes total came out absolutely perfect it's looking super delicious nice and golden brown can't wait to get into this but I'll let it cool for a little bit because it is absolutely lava right now but it is looking absolutely splendid yeah, just like that grab a nice big spoonful some whipped cream maybe a little vanilla ice cream if we find any in the freezer and that is it that is our peach and plum cobbler, a little crisp on top, give us a like on our video and please subscribe so we can put out more of these awesome non-recipe recipes for you guys. Thanks for watching The Big Rob Show and stay tuned until next time. guys and welcome to the Big Rob Show. Today I've got a super scrumptious dessert and whether you call it a crisp, a cobbler, or a crumble, I can show you how to make it super versatile and that... I'm loving life here.